Who is this? Samuel Beckenbauer. At the sound of your approach, the orc turns to face you. He wears a severe expression, but there is a kindness in his eyes. Ah, hello, human. As you can see, I'm in the middle of a conversation with my assistant. The volunteer worker holds his silence, but her expression is full of naked hostility. <laughs> okay. Samuel gives her a sidelong glance, and she seems to get the message. The fire in her eyes dies down to a low simmer. <laughs> joke. Why are you mad? But we do not want to be impolite. Is there something I can do for you? <laughs> why, are you why are you mad? I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. I take it that you run a charity of some sort. He nods. Yes, it isn't much, but we do what we can. Such as? Give me specifics. He clears his throat, then begins to count off on his fingers. In the past several years, I have established a shelter where the dispossessed can sleep, a soup kitchen to feed the hungry, and a library for the people of the Crowds Bazaar to better themselves. It isn't much, I admit, but it's a start. Hey, you're doing good work, man. A good start, Samuel. You must be so hard on yourself. There are limits to what one man, even a determined man, can accomplish. This is true. He nods to the orc at his side. Thankfully, some of the residents that I've helped over the years have come back around to help me. That's good. I've got 15 assorted orcs and trolls from all around the Crowds Bazaar working with me now. They help me man the soup line, stock the library shelves, and to do all of the hundreds of other little things that a community organization needs done every day. These extraordinary individuals are living proof that what we do here has value. They are my inspiration to continue forward. Cool. She beams at the compliment from her body language. It's clear that she idolizes Beckenbauer. Now, do you have any more questions? If not, I will bid you good day. I don't wish to sound self-important or rude, but there are many pressing matters that demand my time. No, I get it. Fifteen assorted orcs and trolls. Does that mean that other races aren't welcome within your organization? <laughs> are we gonna ask? This? You know what? I am curious. That is taking a rather narrow view of what we do. Yes, it is true that my assistants are all members of the goblinoid races. It is also true that before they accepted my help, they were thieves, gangs, gangers, and deadbeats. This is not because they were bad people. This is because those of us with goblinoid traits are feared, mistrusted, and denied gainful employment by a society that hated, hates us. Oh, well, that's rough. I hire only goblinoids because mainstream human society has created the need for me to hire only goblinoids. The orcs and trolls of the Crowds Bazaar deserve a workplace where they'll be treated with dignity and respect. All that being said, our services are available to all. We wouldn't turn a desperate person away regardless of that person's metatype. Even humans, the most privileged of all races, are welcome at our door. Isn't that what's most important? Uh, your use of exclusionary language is telling. Even humans are allowed. <laughs> Well, that's not what he means. No, that's, no, the humans are the majority. And the humans do have majority privilege. <laughs> that's recognized. I reserve judgment. You're helping people and that's what's important. It is. I agree with what you're doing here. You're, making, you're filling a vital need in the community. I reserve judgment. You're helping people and that's what's important. Uh... It is, I agree with what you're doing here. You're filling a vital need in the community. We, we don't know enough. I mean, I can say that to him. But honestly, though... I mean, these could be like... These could be fronts. These could be cover operations for something... Something else. Right? I mean, it's not, it's not guaranteed that everything he does is, is charity work. Uh, our reserve judgment, you're helping people... And that's what's important. He nods slightly. Good of you to understand. Now, is there something else you'd like to talk about? I'd like to talk about your organization. Are you accepting donations? Yes, of course. We're actually desperate for them, truth be told. People seem more intent on taking care of themselves than they are in providing for the less fortunate. 
Aren't, aren't everybody struggling? Of course, these concepts are not unrelated. As poverty rates increase, so does the crime rate. Assisting the needy increases the quality of life for all. Yes... <laughs> In any event, our shelter has some basic needs that desperately need to be filled. The walls of the shelter are not insulated, and new blankets would go a long way towards keeping our guests healthy and comfortable. Ideally, we'd like to purchase some space heaters as well. With 250 yen, new yen, we can make the purchase. Whatever you could spare would be most appreciated. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna give him a pile of money. <laughs> I think I don't think I need this money. The last, like the first game, or you know, Shadowrun Returns. I, I don't, I didn't need that much money. Oh, I just remembered I played on easy. <laughs> now we're playing on normal. Maybe that's wrong. Anyway, you know, let's, let's have the money. Samuel's eyes widen. This is incredibly generous. Thank you, my friend. Not a big deal, Sam. Do good with it. With this donation, we have reached our first goal. Thank you so much for your kind assistance. I will put your contribution to work stocking the shelter with blankets and heaters. You do that. Please do not downplay your contribution. You have shown kindness at a time when few others will. That means something. It means a great deal. Alright, let's talk about something else. Alright, later. I mean, I kill people for a living. <laughs> I'm a shadow runner. Like my last job was supposed to be to break into someone's castle and steal their information. <laughs> so like I'm one of the bad guys, really. <laughs> I am not a law-abiding individual. You see what I mean? So whatever money I have, it's stolen from someone else. <laughs> Lane. Wow, look at this guy. Before you stands a troll, though that is, it is a stretch to say he is standing at all. His great mass is barely held upright by two vintage prosthetic legs along with a crutch under one arm. His body clicks and hums with every shift of his weight. Despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp and calculating. I know you. <laughs> uh, haven't been here long. New to the crowd's bazaar then. Heard Monica had some fresh meat in her stable. <laughs> ah, that's an interesting way to phrase it. I'm SDKC, by the way. Good to meet you, SDKC. Name's Aleski Lane. Uh, what's your place in the crowd's bazaar? That, that a name I should know. What do you do here, Mr. Lane? It can grow mostly, and try not to be a bother. <laughs> Uh, hey, bad news about Monica. Something happened to her on the run. How do you know? You know something about it? I'm afraid so. You know something about it? Just what my eyes and ears tell me. Your eyes and ears... He sees and hears a lot of things. He's gonna be an informant, isn't he? I had a feeling, besides. Monica almost always comes around after a run to check on everybody. She's long overdue, and now here you are in her place. So she's either severely wounded or outright dead. Which is it? We lost her. Dead. I'm afraid she's gone. You're not dead. D-E-D. -E dead. The grizzled troll nods grimly. The servos in his prosthetics complain as he lets loose a heavy sigh. Now that's a shame. She was a hell of a runner, that one. Not good enough to not die. And a good friend. I'll leave you be. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Alright, see, so we just. <laughs> we're just gonna drop some bad news on him and then walk away. Alright. And you be sad by yourself. I'm gonna walk away from you. <laughs> uh, what's going on here? So there's a bit of a market. That's cool. Simi. I'm, I'm going around anti clockwise, by the way. Who are you, Simi? And why, why are you going over there? Talk to Simi. Warming herself in the dim light of a dying street lamp is the wave of a girl who looks far too worn for her years. The mother superior, she says there will be seven for me to care for. I need to see to them. What? The mother superior, she says there will be seven for me to care for. I need to see to them. 
I wasn't aware of any convent, convent or church nearby. Your high is a kind, aren't you? Seven what? What do you have to care for? The captain's children. The mother superior says there are seven. Right. She says I am to be governess to the children. Oh, this this is this is a reference to uh, the sound of music. You notice a chipjack poking. Oh, yeah, no, she's watching a film. You notice a chipjack po poking out beneath the young woman's unruly hair. The vacant look in her eyes marks her as a likely BTL junkie, lost between reality and any be number of better than life virtual constructs. I need money to get back to them. <laughs> The story sounds familiar. <laughs> Captain Von Tramp is very well known and respected. The poor dear lost his wife and the children their mother. <laughs> a child should not be without a mother, and a mother should not be without a child. Have you seen the captain? <laughs> do you, look, do you know Monica? Monica, is she one of the sisters at the Abbey? No, wait, Monica. A flicker of recognition fights through the haze in the young woman's eyes. Yes, Monica, she's good to me. Brings me food to eat and tea to drink. Uh, something happened to her. Not anymore, sweetheart. I'm afraid I have some bad news. <laughs> I'm afraid I have some bad news. Despite the woman's persistent delirium, she seems to glean meaning from your tone. She died? While working on a job, yeah. The girl grips her head with claw-like hands, tugging at her hair as if she might pull her brain out through her skull. I don't like it, but I can't switch it off. I don't... <laughs> the girl's frail body shudders and her eyes grow large, but she does not sob. Instead, she smiles a sad smile, which looks to have been worn all too often. She will go to heaven, she told me. It is a place for good people, stillborn babies, and childhood pets. And she was a good person. Well, okay. The girl then begins to mumble to herself while fingering the hair that covers the jack in her head. Alright. Yes, good, I need to rejoin the children. <laughs> you, you, you do that. You rejoin the children, lady. What is going on here? The phone is ringing? A bizarre monument towers before you. At the top of the pedestal, the form of an angel stands, it, its outstretched wings looming over the small park. But the material is strange and uneven, giving the statue a cold Frankenstein-esque appearance. It appears that the artist has welded his, this monument together from various metal scraps and pieces of junk. As you approach, a small grimy monitor at the base of the statue flickers dimly to life. The grainy face of a smug young orc appears on screen. Hello there, I'm Herbert Kunso, the creator of this monument. What would you like to know? Press 1, the statue name. This is my tribute to victory, the victory of anarchy. It is both a citation and parody of the statue we destroyed some 20 years ago. You may remember it from the history trids as the Sigisilu or Godestel. Godus, Godus. Uh, installation history. Isn't it obvious? The Sigur Salug, a monument to the hubris of the Prussian state, gets blown to bits. So someone takes a lot, a lot of bits and builds a monument to the hubris of anarchy. Okay. I mean, what more is there to say? <laughs> About the artist. I am the visionary Herbert Kunzel from the Lindwarmer. You might know me from... Okay, well, there isn't much I'm done for yet, but I intend to change that. All art is born from misery, after all. <laughs> okay. Anarchist? Why is the phone ringing? It's an old obsolete phone booth that's ringing. Pick up the receiver. The monotone, pitch-adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. The Shockwellen writer's contact for this keys is no more. SDKC is listed as a follow-up contact. 
This is our only secured line to this keys. Please listen to the following instructions carefully if you're a supporter of our cause. Wait, I am a follow-up contact? Oh, wait. Monitor, Monica died and I'm the follow-up contact. Continue listening. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can obtain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undocked copy of it onto the matrix ourselves. Huh. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free to all. However, you will be compensated for sought after information returned to this location. Huh. So I guess Monica was doing this on the side. The line goes silent. I'll keep an eye out. The line remains silent. <laughs> there's like there's an automated bot giving me jobs to do. What's going on here? The market continues. What is this? Is that a bear with a gun? That's a bear with a gun. This goes nowhere. There's another road out here. Triage Cyber Clinic. What does that mean? Doctor, and there's a locked room, and then there's a road outside. As you approach the elf, you notice that he is in mid conversation. His lips move rapidly, and his voice comes out in a low, quiet tone. The glossy plastic shell of a high grade comlink glints on his wrist. Ah, uh, let's not listen in. That seems rude. Step away and wait for him to finish. You step away from the doctor and wait for him to finish. Soon enough, he presses a button on his comp link and he looks up at you, a million dollar smile on his face. Sorry about the wait, my friend. Welcome to the triage cyber clinic. He extends his hand to you. I'm Dr. Xavier e S. Kimbell, and your name is SCKC, a pleasure. Pleased to meet you, SCKC. What can I do for you today? Uh, I need cyberware. How much money do I have? So I gave away 250, right? I have a thousand. I didn't use any cyberware last game because you lose essence, which means you lose magic, but I also didn't use any magic last game. So maybe I should use the cyberware this game. Like, what does this do? Eyes, essence, cost, a data jack, consumes that cyber, I favor spies and ninja traders. Uh, induction data jack. Oh, so instead of using the hit data jack, but I already have a hit data jack. Um, so you can use a hand data jack instead of a head one. Add 6 HP. Alright, so you get a new arm like 6 HP. 8 HP and 1 quickness. That seems kind of good. Cyber Eye Replacement plus 3% to hit. Oh, Eye Data Jack. So, instead of, so again, instead of putting it on your head, you can put it on your eye. Body Dermal Plating Basic plus 1 Armor plus 1 Body. And then HP and quickness. I kind of want plus three to hit, but I don't want to spend the money right now because I'm not sure if I want to spend the money on something else. Let me think about this. Who is that? Also, where am I? We came from. Okay, who are you? 